Hey, welcome back. Well, it's time to talk turtle. Uh, Sunday was like a turtle's explosion. If you guys hadn't been out to Target, you might have missed it, but we had a lot of the Mutant Mayhem figures launched. Uh, Playmates also launched uh, or relaunched some other characters, and uh, there was just a lot of turtle stuff at Target, uh, so I'll be getting to all that in the next couple weeks. Uh, but first, I already showed you guys the, I don't want to call it wave, but the heroes, and now I want to show you the, the villains plus more. Uh, which I thought the villains had some of the more interesting deviations from what we've seen in the past. Uh, checking out first, I think Rocksteady is one of the dra most drastic alterations we've seen in the character with this elongated snout. Uh, I like how the packaging sort of is a throwback to the uh, play school figures with the inclusion of those weapons on there. And I'll show you why in a minute as well. Uh, of course, we got Bebop here, still borrowing some characteristics from his uh, original cartoon counterpart with those turtle shells on the shoulders, but also a more pronounced snout and a more pronounced uh, tusk there on the snout. Uh, of course, we have Leatherhead as well, and I think he has a really kind of odd design to him, almost kind of Pixar-esque with this elongated face and these little beady eyes within the goggles. Uh, so they're definitely playing up some different attributes there on this guy as well. And I know he's not a villain, but I saw him there as well, uh, Splinter, who has some really drastic alterations I want to talk about in terms of this look on this character. Uh, everything down to the bathrobe and the sweatpants, definitely going for some big uh, Peter B. Parker vibes from the uh, Spider-Man Into the Spider-Verse film. So uh, we'll be taking a look at that. I wasn't able to find Superfly. I didn't see him on shelves. Uh, I went to like four targets and just kind of gave up after that, but I'm sure he's out there as well but I thought this would be a good chance to show you guys a couple of the turtles as well as their classic counterparts because I picked up those retro figures as well. So why don't we just hop right in and we'll start with Rocksteady. All right, I thought this would be fun to show you guys how they stack up against the, the classic retro figures. Don't worry, these are not original vintage turtles that I'm opening here and committing a sacrilege. These are the new ones that were also recently released uh, a couple months ago um, as well. You should be able to find these in most major retailers, but they're pretty much a one-for-one -one copy of the original turtles. You can see here in the package, it also has that bracket of weapons over there, similar to how the Mutant Mayhem figures are sort of bringing that back. So that's kind of cool that they kept that sort of aesthetic to the, the figure, it's kind of a throwback. It's a nice little bit of nostalgia. If you guys do want to see me open a vintage turtle, you can see the Slash video I did with uh, the original vintage Slash against the Super 7 Slash. But let's get into this guy. We're going to do an accelerated uh, unboxing today, checking out our Rocksteady here. Like I said, I think he's got one of the most interesting uh, redesigns of the character with this gigantic snout he's featuring. Uh, just really makes the character look interesting. And uh, I, I wouldn't say comical, but uh, definitely different than we've seen past iterations of Rocksteady. So uh, let's see if he stands. That's one of my biggest concerns here. So we got the little uh, screw cutters to help us out with these uh, little obstacles that I like to create on here. Now, this is really weird. So when they put him in here, they left his arm off. Uh, so <laughs> it's a separate piece. This is the first time I've had to assemble a figure uh, to put an arm on that wasn't like a statue or something. So that's kind of interesting. Uh, I guess just the way he fit in the packaging there. Uh, it doesn't seem like this is going to be too difficult. Um, maybe I lied. Oh, there we go. That's in there now. He's got his arm. Uh, so that was a really interesting <laughs> choice of packaging, uh, but let's see how he uh, let's see how we get him to stand here. Um, yeah, he does stand. He's got a good center of gravity. So let's check him out while I grab his accessories. Uh, so you can see that really prolongated snout he has on there, which I think really makes the character interesting um, over the original designs. You can see his uh, he still has those those pants that we always see Rocksteady with those almost military grade uh, cargo pants there. And he has a bandolier uh, and that smug look of uh, self-satisfaction that uh, is always evident on Rock Sturdy uh, when he's about to say, say your prayers, turtles, or something like that, turtles. Um, but then again, uh, it doesn't end up winning the day. So we have his retro accessories here as well, and I'll give you a nice close-up of these. A little hammer, a little uh, a sewer lid uh, turned into a shield, a knife, and his, his retro blaster there. And then he has a modern day blaster equivalent that we'll put here in his hand. Um, so I kind of noticed this is consistent where they get these throwback weapons, and then they get these modern weapons as well. Uh, so that's kind of fun to have that. 
Uh, so while I have them here, let's check out the original sort of retro style Rocksteady. I gotta say with these retro ones, it's, it's the card work for me. I love the card backs. I love how they have that really interesting um, look to them uh, where they have the sort of you know, little hand-drawn um, character there doing different things. He's eating turtles in this picture, so it's kind of crazy. A little dark uh, as a kid, but still kind of fun to see that. Uh, and appreciating it even more as an adult. So he's also secured in here by a little tie tab. Don't have to put his arm on, <laughs> it comes attached. We didn't have to assemble figures back in the 80s. Uh, so that's great that uh, they didn't make us do that again here. Uh, so yeah, his weapons, very similar to the, the ones I just showed you. I'll give you a close up here. Um, so he has that shield, it's just a little bit more pronounced, the city sewer on it. He has that knife, uh, again, a little bit more pronounced, and then his sort of retro rifle, very similar to this one here. Um, the only additional accessory you're getting here is this hammer that wasn't, uh, maybe it was or maybe it wasn't, I can't fully recall, featuring the original release of Rocksteady. But um, yeah, I mean, here he is stacked up against his, his modern day counterpart. The original was a little bit taller, a little bit, uh, I want to say, emphasized those muscles, and you have the uh, sort of the, the spine on the back there. But uh, why don't I give you guys a, a close-up here? We could check out these two side by side. All right, so with our rock steady, so first of all, I fixed the arm there. I, I didn't have it perfectly aligned on that, uh, and I can't really redo that tape because you can't unbox an unboxing. Uh, so uh, you want to make sure it lines up perfectly here. There'd be a little flat notch on the back. So when you push it in, make sure you get that flat notch to lock in better, and then it'll have that, that correct mobility in there. Uh, but with the rock steady, you can see we're still having those, those camo pants on there, although this not as much emphasized. You can still see some of the black marks there, not as much emphasized on the camo, but that's still those brown pants, so the, the boots, a military style look to him. He doesn't have that belt with the turtle shells on it, uh, and he doesn't have that overemphasized spine like we saw in the original uh, style retro figure. But they still drew a lot of the elements out of there. They changed the shirt color, but he still has that tank top with these, these brown pants, uh, similar weapon. Um, so everything is kind of, uh, you know, relatively the same for Rocksteady there. They really overemphasize that snout. Now, I kind of like it. I think it's neat. It uh, really emphasizes the animal features there. So they made them a little bit more pronounced that way. Um, they, they gave him this gut, which the original had this chiseled look. 80s and 90s, all these figures had this chiseled look. We had uh, He-Man and the Masters of the Universe. They had all had this chiseled look. And then even the Star Wars line that started in 95, they all had this chisel, a beefy look to them. <laughs> so it was kind of, uh, uh, kind of crazy that everybody was so ripped back then, but that's just how the 90s were. The action had to be uh, action characters. Every figure had to be uh, jacked up. So uh, this is more of a uh, look in keeping with some of the modern takes of Rocksteady with the, the belly. But uh, looking at the articulation, our original figures had some wrist articulation and arm articulation in the legs, no knees, and the head would turn. But on the modern versions, we still had that wrist articulation. Now we have elbows. We have more of a shoulder movement than we did in the original. So up and down, forward and back. Uh, and that on both sides. The head goes side to side here. It's not going to maneuver much. Can't look up. Uh, the legs, the little stubby legs, still have knees that bend. So you have a little bit more maneuverability here in the legs. Nothing on the waist. Um, he's just one solid piece there, but I don't think the originals had any waist articulation either. So um, he stands a little bit better. The, the previous ones, you had to have this wider stance to get him to stand. Uh, so I do like how um, he stands a little bit better and he could hold his gun a little bit better because he could move that arm out. These ones can't. So you could either have the gun on the, the outside or the inside, but it never really sat right in here, uh, which was kind of a pain. Um, you can never really get a good pose with Rocksteady. You could do this if you kind of scrunched it in there, but uh, this feels a little bit more natural, so I kind of like that. But uh, he, he might be my favorite of the set. I kind of like this design, uh, emphasizing the animal features, makes him a little neat. It's a little stubbier than the original Rocksteady. Uh, Bebop and Rocksteady were kind of imposing over the turtles, particularly in the arcade game, so they're a little bit shorter and compared to the turtles here but uh, I, they're more powerful. So we'll see how that stacks up in the film. I'm not sure if it's scale or if it's just a toy design thing. We'll see. Uh, but let's move on now and check out Bebop. Continuing on now, we got Bebop. I know it's always Bebop and Rocksteady, but I figured why not just reverse the order? It's the worst that could happen. So we're gonna have Bebop today. Um, so he's a little bit interesting too. Like I said, he's got that pronounced snout a little bit, but they really want um, 
uh, a little bit more on the tusks than they have traditionally, which I thought was kind of cool uh, to sort of make him more, really draw on those warthog as features. And I think a lot of what they're doing in the this new animation style, besides, you know, adopting that, that Spider-Man animation style, is um, sort of drawing out the, the mutated features of these characters. Uh, so again, he's going to be locked in with that little, uh, that little tab here. Both his arms are attached, so we don't have to worry about that. Uh, so as I, pardon the noise here, as I pop him out, a little noisy. Uh, he looks very similar to his classic design here. Um, I really kind of like how they adopted that still. Gave him a bit of a belly, but still kept that design there. So let's check him out really quick, close up. Uh, so you can see he's still got those 1980s visor and that, that sort of mohawk he has, uh, he's always had on there. Uh, they kept those shells as his sort of uh, his shoulder armor there. Uh, and they also have the, the pants, which looks like they're starting to drape down a little bit, but the classic black color on them as well. Uh, pronounced his uh, sort of uh, claws there a little bit on the figure. But uh, all in all, I say it's more of a classic inspired look for Bebop. And of course, he comes with his, uh, his mutating weapon or whatever it's called here, um, but like a modern take on it. So we'll carve that out here. Everything is, is well secured and packaged. Um, so we have that little drill gun that he uh, came with originally um, that was featured on the show, featured on the video game. Uh, so that returns here as well. So he has a host of accessories. These are a throwback to the original. Uh, so we'll give you a nice close-up of this. He's got his knife, his uh, trash can shield, his little drill gun, and then a club here. Uh, but he has this more modern accessory that fits in uh, with the character that's probably taken right out of the movie. So again, they kept that the theme with classic accessories, the modern accessory equivalent in there as well, uh, just to sort of round out the character. Um, so taking a look at his retro version, like I said, he has that retro aesthetic, uh, very similar to the Bebop we I just showed you, but a little bit more <clears throat> 80 stylized, which makes sense. Again, that terrific uh, design on the packaging. I love that. Uh, you can see him with his, all his accessories are sort of featured on there. So they, they, make you, uh, they make you see how you could really get the most out of the character on these packages, even though you might not see some of these accessories appear in the show. Uh, it's still nice that they were able to uh, emphasize them on the artwork on the packaging. And then we have our character here also secured by a little um, tab or uh, whatnot. But this character, uh, just like the Rocksteady, the original Rocksteady, a little bit taller, uh, but very similar features nonetheless. The same colored shirt here, the, the turtle um, shoulder guards there, and the uh, open shirt look. Uh, so keeping in, in the same style there. I appreciate that. So it's a nice kind of a moving forward, but looking back kind of style they went with here. Uh, for some reason, I can't make him stand. These guys always had sort of a weird stance since their knees didn't bed. They were always kind of like hunched over like they're a, a catcher in, the, in baseball. So, uh, or more like a, a shortstop or something like that. They're just kind of hunched over a little bit, um, like they're ready to catch a grounder, but uh, not standing fully, fully upright. Uh, and then the weapons, like I, I told you here, and I'll get into a, a close-up of these as well. So we have the shield and that little drill gun and then a knife. So pretty close to what we saw with the, the new accessories, except they added this little club in there. Otherwise, they pretty much have all the accessories they had in the original release of the guy. Uh, but why don't I zoom in here uh, really quick. We do a little transition so you can see these guys up close side by side. All right, taking a closer look at our guys, we'll check out the articulation. Of course, on the originals here. Uh, no elbow articulation, just the shoulders, just the legs, and the head. Uh, so just essentially a 5 POA. Uh, this one doesn't even have waist articulation. Uh, and then of course on the newer ones, we got those elbows again. We have the shoulders, uh, we have the knees, and we have the, the, uh, the thighs there. Uh, and then that head, this one rotates left and right as well. Um, yeah, no, no attachable arm in this one, no, not necessary. Uh, but if we look at some of the other sort of comparisons there, they both have that chain link belt that wraps around here that's also black and uh, the tail it looks like in, in this one it, it did burst out of the pants perhaps here um, and the, out of the pits out of the pants here it's painted black uh, so that was consistent there but uh, all together you still got that mohawk uh, this one has a little bit of a mullet on it too uh, similar visor there but like I said those tufts are really pronounced on the newer figure not so much on the, the classic look uh, still has that the nose ring there 
Um, but yeah, those are sort of the major the differences here. He's not wearing uh, the, his classic skull necklace uh, like the original character, but still really drawing from that old inspiration there. Um, this one has a more of a consistent tone where this one had a face, a different color in the face here on the snout than the rest of the body. This one seems consistent throughout. So, uh, and I do like how the belly is protruding out of the shirt. So that's kind of a fun feature. This was more of a uh, defined ripped look to him. Um, and he had a bit of a logo here on the back as well, which we didn't see on the on the newer version. But altogether, I think it's pretty cool how they, they drew from the classic Bebop look and uh, sort of kept that, but sort of expanded on it with this pronounced snout and these uh, tusks to really emphasize his uh, animal features. So let's move on next to uh, Leatherhead. Okay, Leatherhead has this really interesting design to his character with this elongated snout and this almost Pixar-esque look he's got to him. Um, so it's kind of interesting to see where they're going with this uh, character and uh, why they decided to emphasize certain features on him. But uh, yeah, he is a little different than the original and I'll show you um, of why in just a second. But uh, yeah, just like the other characters, he's also secured in here with this little, little, I don't know, rope, tough rope thing. I don't like these. <laughs> They're on a lot of characters and they, they just annoy me. All right, so we'll check him out really close here. He's got this tail protruding through his legs for the package, but you could rotate it around to get that as a, I think it gives you an extra point of contact to help make him stand up. But you can see a little bit of layering on this character. He's got this um, sash across the front here, this bandolier. Uh, that's a, obviously a holster there for his shotgun that goes onto the back. The hat has uh, different colors for the, the teeth he's got collected in there. And then he's got these goggles on, so you don't get to see his eyes. Uh, and then you have the snout here. The snout doesn't open or anything like that. Uh, but then you got all these, um, he's wearing his boots and he look like he's wearing some wading pants, like he's going to be, you know, wading through the bayou or something like that. And then he's got that vest, which is a, an independent piece that's layered on top there. So a nice little bit of layering on that character. And despite this odd design, he stands up even without using the uh, tail, which is pretty good. Uh, he's got a nice modern uh, style weapon here to go with him, a little shotgun that you could put in his hand, his sawed off here, um, just like he had in the original. But this one is two-tone color, it's not monotone. Uh, so it's a little bit nicer style, something pulling out of a, you know, a modern figure would do there. And then of course he has all his throwback weapon and accessories. Uh, I'll give you a, sh a shot here with that little shotgun that was his classic weapon. This looks like a harpoon of something or a fishing rod here. Um, that's also probably a weapon. And then that trap that he has on there and then a filleting knife or for his hunts. Uh, so of course he needs that. He was a, a hunter and, uh, I mean, look, he fell just after I said he stands up really well. Uh, yeah, there we go. Uh, so, yeah, so looking at the original now, I said it was a stark in contrast because, uh, I mean, this was more of something out of a horror story. I mean, look at the, the packaging with the, that grimace he has on there and those beady eyes. And then the, the shot of Raphael there getting um, his foot chewed off by the, uh, the, the bear trap that comes with him. Like... This was one of the scariest turtles I remember as a kid, the scariest turtles action figures. Um, and, uh, you know, that was cat. And then he had a gun, too, to, to kick it all off uh, with everything else. So um, this is a drastic redesign. They're not showing his eyes, so it probably makes him a lot less scary, more kid friendly. Um, he's, he doesn't have a smile or uh, those teeth um, glaring out of there. So, again, probably makes him more kid friendly. And, uh, you know, they just they kind of skipped a lot of those features on the, the design of the character. Um, so, I mean, there's more of like a, a comedic tone to the movie, you could tell from the trailer. So they probably don't want to play the elements of some of their scarier, their villains in the series. Uh, but just like the original, you know, he has that tail you could use as a point of contact to help stabilize him. A shorter frame than the other characters. I mean, pretty scary still. Uh, his mouth open though, uh, so you could play on those teeth. Um, you know, a little bit less designing on the outfits. Everything was molded one piece, but his belt could still hold that, uh, that shotgun that came with him. Um, but far less accessories than the modern counterpart he was coming with. He just had the shotgun and he just had that little trap. That was really it. Uh, he didn't carry anything else. Uh, he didn't need anything else. That's all he needed to get the job done. Uh, so simplistic character from a simpler time, but that was really it for, um, or Leatherhead there. So 
uh, yeah, I mean, they went from scary to more, more kid-friendly, a little bit more uh, bipedal. Uh, this one was pretty low to the ground, and it almost looked like he'd just be crawling on the ground. So they made him look a little bit more humanoid in this newer version. Uh, but why don't we check them out together side by side and uh, see what we can notice. All right, so like I said, a little lower to the ground, not as tall as the, the newer version. Um, he had a little bit better range of motion in the hips uh, than the other characters, um, but no knee articulation. The tail would turn, the arms would move, the jaw would open and close, and the head would turn. So a little bit more articulation there, and the shotgun would, with a little effort, fit in that belt in the back there. Um, so you could have him carrying that around while he used his traps so switching accessories. So moving on to the, the modern take on this guy. Uh, so he has those bendable knees in addition to that um, articulation of the thighs. The tail is on, a, is on a ball and seems to move up and down as well on a different joint. So two points of articulation in that tail. The arms have the shoulder and then that, uh, two different points of articulation in the shoulder. Then they build into the elbows and they also have that uh, wrist articulation as well. The head moves side to side, uh, a little bit up and down so it's on a ball there. The, the mouth does not open. I do not see a way to open the mouth. I'm not going to pry it open. It's not designed to open. Um, watch it pop open when I'm saying that. Nope. It looks like it almost does, but it does not. Uh, the goggles don't come off. The hat doesn't come off. That's all mounted onto there. He has that um, double barrel there, and that should fit into the, the holster here with a little bit of effort probably. Yep, you can get it in sideways there. Makes more sense to have him pull it off his back there than off his waist. Um, so... I kind of like that redesign for the, the holster, uh, just because it makes sense. <laughs> but uh, I kind of like this character um, in the sense I know he's a kind of a drastic design, something out of like a Pixar film, but uh, making him a little bit more bipedal um, and a little bit more hunter or craven-like uh, than this this horror show <laughs> alligator, which, you know, for a toy was very realistic, I gotta say, as an alligator. Uh, very creepy. Um, so this kind of makes it a little bit more kid-friendly, a little bit more comical, keeping with the lighter theme of the film. Uh, still bringing in some of those accessories, although they weren't really on this kind of display. Not all the figures had this kind of display for accessories. Uh, so uh, they did capture the, at least the, the two core accessories from the character. Uh, so that's it for the villains, but like I said, I brought one more into it. I got Splinter. So let's take a look at the Sensei next. Well, Splinter wasn't safe from the redesigns either. He went through a big change as well, so we'll be checking that out. Um, I think it's kind of interesting, and I wonder if it's just playing into the lighthearted tone of it, or if there's, uh, you know, it speaks to his character. We'll find out in the film. Uh, but like I said, I, I kind of think they drew a lot of inspiration from the mentorship role of uh, Peter B. Parker in the um, Into the Spider Verse, and his look where he was sporting sort of sweatpants in the not so much trying sort of look. Uh, so we have a very similar style here with Splinter. So you can see here, uh, traditionally he wore a kimono. This looks more like a bathrobe, <laughs> but maybe it's a kimono. And he has a t-shirt underneath. Uh, he's wearing these glasses. Um, and then he's got sweatpants. I mean, these, these very obviously look like sweatpants uh, underneath there, his robe. Um, he didn't, I don't think he wore pants before. So this is a diversion for him uh, from his old cartoon look. Uh, but yeah, it's a, kind of a drastic design, making him look more like a, a dad on his way out to get the, um, the morning paper uh, holding a coffee in hand than uh, the, the sensei we have seen from uh, all the previous uh, films. Uh, so he comes with, uh, like all the other films, or the, all the other characters here, he has these throwback accessories, and then he has a modern accessory. So the throwback accessories, that's where we see his, his bow um, and his arrows. I don't think the original had arrows. I, I did some research on that. It did not, so those are new. But uh, the throwing stars and all these other pieces here, including his little cane sword, um, are included. But then he has a modern-day equivalent accessory, which has um, a painted handle here. And uh, it looks like it's two parts, uh, although I'm not getting it to separate. Maybe? Nope. Okay. No, it's not two parts. So this is uh, meant to be a cane. I thought maybe it pulls out and there's a sword underneath, but I can't get it to pull out. Uh, so anyway, we have the um, little walking stick or what, or tonfa or whatever it's supposed to be here in his hand. So he has that, and then he has a uh, more traditional equivalent of it over here. Um, but that's really uh, uh, interesting design for him, particularly adding the glasses on there. I like that. 
Um, and then the painted tail, just drawing out his, his rat features a little bit more. Um, you know, they pr pronounce the, uh, you can see a little hair under the chin and uh, a little hair all around the face there. So really emphasizing the rat features as well. But, you know, looking at the, the retro equivalent here, uh, again, love the packaging. Um, not as angry or aggressive as the bad guys. Uh, just kind of hopping around doing some uh, karate moves on the, uh, the package here and just showing him with his bow, but uh, not <laughs> attacking anybody in particular, uh, just, just doing him, you know, not out to, to start a fight, just uh, prepared to finish one if necessary. Uh, so we have him here and he is in more of a, uh, again, he's got this little wrapper around him here. So looking at him, he's more of a traditional sort of uh, kimono he's got on there. And he has the leg wraps just like the other splinter does. Uh, this one just has kind of a gray tail, uh, tip to the tail. Um, his belt was its own piece, uh, but he had a little rat face, but that's really it. Um, he he didn't, doesn't have more pronounced features or different color scales. It was just sort of one tone. And then of course we have this uh, weird system of how you have to balance the character there. Uh, but he came with a couple of accessories as well. Uh, most noticeably was the, the bow accessory that he came with that had that arrow mounted on there so he couldn't do anything. And then of course he had the, uh, the throwing stars like everyone did and then he had the cane. Now this it went inside the cane part so there has to be a way <laughs> to take that out. Um, it, it's got to come out somehow. Uh, I just I believe it's, it's in there. And if you put enough pressure on it, maybe it, it pops out. Uh, I'll work on it as we do a, a zoom here to check out these two characters side by side. Okay, so first of all, victory. <laughs> it took a lot of pressure, but I was able to pull this out. And it is a, a different colored blade on there as well. So that's pretty cool that they um, sort of emphasize the, the, the modern look by having that blade in the different color and a different tone on the, the wrap here as well. And then of course we have the, the old school version um, and that was just a single color, uh, but that fit in there as well. Um, this was a, a two-piecer as well. So they kept that consistent between the two, and I kind of like that um, to keep that sort of dynamic in there. But uh, yeah, I mean, the original Splinter had the arms, he had the legs, uh, the tail articulated, um, and then the head moved, and that was really it. He had nothing on underneath the robe, but it was a cloth robe at the time. It didn't really fit well with the tail. Maybe a cutout or a slit would have been nicer. And they had that gray tip on the tail there, um, those beady little eyes. But uh, that was really it. Giant feet. <laughs> that was really it. So the new version has that wrist articulation, the, the elbow articulation, the arm, two points in the arm, um, just the shoulders go up and down and go forward and back. And then he had the, um, this one has ankle articulation as well as uh, knee. Um, oh no, no knee articulation on this one. I'm sorry. It's just the hip articulation. So they make up for the lack of knees with uh, ankle articulation, I guess. Um, but just the uh, hip articulation there. And then the tail articulates side to side. Uh, that's really it. You can't move it in around, but it's more of a pink tail, which you see uh, common on a lot of rats as well. Um, and then that, that robe is, is one piece molded on there to the top, but on the bottom part, this is a second piece. So it kind of drapes over, creates a little layering. Same with the belt. And he's got a little belly on there. Again, portrayed as an aging dad in his uh, probably midlife here, uh, as opposed to the other Splinter, which um, was more of that, that master and less of a father figure. Um, except in the, the movie, I think he kind of played out that father figure aspect a little more. Uh, but they're definitely going for that with this design of portraying him as more of a dad to a teenager uh, with that older look to the character with the design features as well, even the glasses to make him look a little older as opposed to the sort of timeless, ageless splinter from the, the cartoon series uh, that was brought over to the original Playmates look here. Uh, but that is our splinter, a um, little, little different, wearing a purple belt too, I noticed, instead of a black belt. So again, I don't know if this is his look for his training or if this is just splinter waking up in the morning, throwing on his bathrobe kind of look, <laughs> which is what I get when I look at it initially. Um, he still has those wraps on his feet though, uh, so that's kind of nice. So that is Splinter. Uh, why don't we take a look at all these guys side by side? Well, that's our look at some additional characters from the Mutant Mayhem line. Uh, this focusing mostly on the villains here with the uh, missing Superfly, which I didn't see on the shelf yet. Adding another hero, having our Splinter character to our group of turtles here. 
you can see the height similarities. Uh, they're kind of pretty close to the turtle size. It's not as tall as they are depicted in some uh, other mediums. So um, it, I think they went back and forth with them being kind of on par with being just slightly taller than a turtle. So <clears throat> depending on how you look at it, more in line with the size of the turtles. Uh, so we just had the Superfly. There's also an April O'Neil character, but I only seen her as part of like a seven pack or a six pack. So you'd have to spend money on all, all the turtles uh, and uh, Bebop and then April and they just have like some kind of ooze paint aesthetic to them is the only difference. So they might offer her as a single character at some point in the future, a uh, single carded feature. So uh, for right now, you had to get her in that, that large um, six pack. Uh, but these are on shelves now. They came out on Sunday. Uh, if there's any left, they'd be at Target. There's also some baby turtles. Uh, you get some younger versions of the turtle characters. You get turtles with bikes. You get turtles with action fe features. You get tall turtles like the classic 89 giant turtles, but um, there would be the um, Mutant Mayhem version of the turtles. So you could get those as well. So uh, and there's more coming out. There are the party wagons out there too. Um, that was sold out everywhere I saw it. Uh, and then there's a lair that went up for pre-order as well. i um, curious how that compares. I love the original Playmates Turtle Lair. Uh, but that's the line uh, for most of the line right now. So um, love, it, love it or leave it. I, I think it's cool. It's definitely different. Uh, they're definitely emphasizing individual features instead of having them all be carbon copies of each other, just different colors. So that's kind of neat. Uh, so that's all for this time. If you're wondering what I'm going to talk about next in terms of turtles, well, I saw these on the shelves too. These were some of my favorite characters from the original, and of course I'm talking about the mutating turtles. Uh, so this is mutating Leo, and there's mutating Raph. Uh, on the back it has a picture for Donnie and Mike, but I did not see them at like six different targets. Uh, they had like a hundred of these, but only these two. So maybe that's a second wave coming out in the future. But these are advertised as a Target exclusive, the mutating ones, and they come with all the accessories they used to, which is really cool. So I'll crack into these and we'll check them out. I don't think I could dig up my originals in time uh, to show you, but uh, I, as far as I noticed, they're exactly carbon copies of the original, which is really cool. I hope they do be Bob and Rocksteady as well. Um, these were these were really cool um, to, ha to have these back when I was a kid, the mutating ones. I loved it. I don't know why. It was almost like they were Transformers, essentially. But um, yeah, so we'll check these out next week. Uh, but that's all for now. Thanks for watching. Uh, like, subscribe, and follow as always. And we'll see you guys next time.